Hey guys, my name is Vishal and I welcome you all to yet another session by Dureka. Today I'm going to go ahead and talk about Microsoft Azure certifications and while doing that I would be focusing on Azure AZ 100. AZ 100 is a new certification that has been introduced by Azure and before we dive deeper into the details of this particular certification, let's start by taking a look at the offerings of this particular session. So first and foremost, I would start by talking about why did this transition happen? Moving further, we would understand what does this particular certification cover and what are some of its prerequisites. We would also discuss some of the exam basics, the types of questions that you can expect, and finally, I would finish things off by talking about what approach you should take in order to clear this certification examination. Having said that, guys, let's just move further and take a look at the first topic of discussion. So, why did this transition happen? Well, these are the two major reasons. One is that helped Azure to break the content down. And next is it helped introduce or introduce specialized approach. Now, what do I mean by this? Let me throw some light on the certifications that existed before this. Actually, those certifications are still there in the market. We would be talking about that as well. But let's try to understand why did Azure introduce these new certifications. Well, the previous certifications which focused on specific roles had a huge amount of curriculum which the customers or the exam takers had to take care of. Now what that meant was they had to focus on plethora of topics before appearing for these examinations. So what Azure did was they broke that content down into relevant parts and accordingly they had individual certifications so that people can focus on those and then move to the next certification and use the previous one as the stepping stone just like AWS has done. I mean they have the associate level certifications and then the advanced level. Now Azure is walking on similar paths and their reason for doing that is much better. I mean what their reason gives them is one they get to divide the content into smaller parts and focus more on the specialized parts now if you talk about the new certifications AZ 100 it specifically focuses on administrative and infrastructure part then if you clear this certification you can move further and take the advanced level certification we would be discussing about that as well but for now the main reason this transition has happened is it helped break the content down and the second was it introduced specialized approach i hope this is clear to you guys so let's move further and talk about something else so what does this certification exactly cover guys as I've already mentioned it mostly focuses on the complete know-how of how Azure works that is understandable and the second thing it does is it introduces you to Azure's platform and focuses on infrastructure and deployment which specifically deals with administrative roles. So it is understandable that this certification mostly covers everything that concerns an administrative role at least from Azure certification point of view or Microsoft Azure's certification point of view. So guys, uh, what are some of the prerequisites? Now when I say prerequisites, I would be talking about who are the candidates that can actually go ahead and appear for this examination. We would understand what are the things that they should know, what are the concepts they should know, what experience should they have and all those things. So let's just move further and talk about the prerequisites. So who should take this examination? Well, it is specifically designed for people who have administrative experience or have an administrative understanding of cloud platforms so that they know how storage security networking and compute services work. They should also have a deep understanding of the complete life cycle of projects that go on cloud because that helps them know if there is any fault in a particular stage they know how to deal with those kind of faults. I've always laid emphasis on this point that if you are planning to get into the administrative part you need to have an understanding of these minute things. Again if you are planning to switch to cloud platform do not stay under the myth that you can get away without programming guys understanding of programming fundamentals is very important understanding how PowerShell works how command line interfaces work again the networking principles which are very core to computing are also very important and you should be proficient in it. You should have knowledge of Azure portal that is taken for granted because you are appearing for an Azure certification. You should understand how resource managers work. We'll be talking about that as well. Do not worry. You should understand virtualization and should be familiar with cloud infrastructures to the core storage services. I've already laid emphasis on this particular topic and the reason I've done that is because you cannot talk about cloud platforms without worrying about where and how would you be dumping your data on. So guys, let's move further and try to understand some of the basics. Now here we would be discussing what are the do's don'ts. What are some of the requirements exam duration and stuff like that. So let's try to talk about those things as well. So guys if you talk about the duration it is somewhere around three hours if I'm not wrong that is 150 to 180 minutes guys. Now again let me tell you one thing Azure is very profound when you talk about its services and its exam not services its examinations. I mean you do not know how many questions you should expect the time can vary a little to and fro because it depends upon exam to exam. 
So that is why it is approximately three hours. That is 150 to 180 minutes. Again, what are the number of questions you can expect? This part is profound as well. It is somewhere in the range of 45 to 60 guys. What are the languages in which you can take the examination? Now, if you talk about other certifications, those are available in different languages like Spanish, Chinese, French, German, Russian, Japanese. But this particular certification, as you can see, English is bolded. That means you can take this exam only in English and you can cancel out all the other languages that I just mentioned. So if you are to take this certification, you should know English scoring. What is the clearing percentage? Now it is 700 points guys, not 70%. Why is it different when I say 700 points? Because a particular question might have less pointers or the other one might have more pointers. So if you take or appear for a question that is small sized question and you wonder that you might get two marks for it. That's not the case because for some questions the points are more for some it is less. It totally depends on how Azure adjusts your certification examination. So again guys uh, not be under the notion that it is 70% you have to score 700 points which again is not under your control. So try to answer as many questions as possible exam fees guys. It depends upon the different locations as in from where you're taking the examination. Standard fees is $165 US dollars is what I'm talking about as we move into the explanation part or when I show you the website where all these details are present we would be discussing this point. So do not worry about that. Let's just move further and talk about something else. So what are the exam topics now as I've already mentioned what Microsoft Azure has done is they've tried breaking down the content into or the exam content into smaller parts. So let's see what are the pointers that this particular examination expects you to focus on. So first and foremost, you need to have an understanding of how do you manage Azure subscriptions and resources implement and manage storage services deploy and manage virtual machines configure and manage virtual networks manage identities as well. Now guys if you take a look at the percentages now the distribution of questions is fairly even guys. That means that you would be expected to focus on all the topics. You cannot just let go of any of the modules or take any of the modules lightly. Again, the number of questions asked from each module would be expected to be somewhere in the range of 15 to 20 percent. But then do not expect every pointer that is mentioned here to appear in the examination. It is a guideline, not an exact replica that you'd be expecting questions only from this particular topic. So guys, let's try to understand these topics in detail. So when you say manage Azure subscriptions and resources, these are the pointers you can expect. So you'd be expected to manage your Azure subscriptions, analyze the resource utilization and consumption and manage resource groups. Now that means you would be expected to have understanding of how the admin rules and policies work, what access rights you need to give to others and how do you manage all these subscriptions. Now these are some of the details that you'd be expected to focus on. Next when you talk about storage as I've already mentioned storage is very important. So you need to understand how to create and configure storage accounts. How do you import and export data to Azure? Um, what are the different storage services? What are the different methods of integration and stuff like that? Configure Azure files and you'd be expected to implement Azure backup deploy and manage virtual machines. Now guys if you talk about cloud platforms you need to understand how VMs work. You should be able to create and configure VM for Windows and Linux. You should be able to automate deployment on VMs. You are expected to manage Azure virtual machines and then manage Azure virtual machine backups as well. Trust me guys virtualization is very centric to cloud platforms and understanding of this domain is very crucial. Configure and manage virtual networks again networking is something that is core to cloud computing and that is why the administrative roles come into picture and these roles play a very important role guys. So if you are focusing on these topics you should be able to understand how connectivity works and how to create valid connections how to preserve those connections as well and how to implement and manage these virtual networking connections. Again when you talk about the pointers that are below here you would be understanding that you need to understand how name resolutions work DNS and all those things and how do you create and configure your security groups because security as I've already mentioned is important if you talk about protecting your data manage identities guys now this is where monitoring comes into picture and these are the pointers you would be focusing on. You should be able to understand and manage your Azure Active Directory have understanding of how Azure AD objects work and implement and manage hybrid identities as well. So guys let's move further and try to understand what are the type of questions that you can expect in this particular examination before we do that understand this that first and foremost you would be thrown with a question that talks about what experience do you have are you a beginner medium level experienced person or you are an expert now don't mistake this question for the fact that based on the experience that you show in here you would be asked questions now guys this does not gauge the difficulty level or the type of questions that you can expect based on experience. 
Azure just wants to make note of the experience that you have and from where do you plan to start with Microsoft Azure? That is why this question. So do not misunderstand this question. See guys it is mentioned here that do not mistake its intention. Microsoft Azure just wants to know when you are actually planning to take this examination. So guys what are the type of questions that you can expect? First is scenario based and the other one is standalone questions. Whether or not coding well guys you need to have understanding of programming fundamentals in one way or the other you would be tested on your coding skills as well. Now this being an administrative certification not to the core but yes to some level. Yes, definitely. Yes. So let's try to understand what approach you should take to appear for these questions in a better way. Scenario based questions guys. These are lengthy questions. So skim through it focus on important pointers only moving further. There would be quite a few distractions guys. So understand what part do you want to focus on and what not specific answers are required guys and you cannot actually just go back and forth once you are reading a passage do it completely answer the questions and then move further no going back in this particular case guys so take care of that standalone questions these are easier to appear make sure you manage your time well because you would want to appear all these questions for again guys um important point up think from the invis letters perspective or the moderators perspective because what that means is you'd be prepared as in what is the moderator exactly trying to ask that is why this pointer is important attempt all the questions guys because no negative marking here and yes manage your time properly so guys if you take this approach you would be in a very good state to clear this particular certification examination when i say what approach you should take first and foremost you create a free tier account on microsoft azure and use their services get sufficient hands on on the topics that you'd want to take care of when you appear for this examination explore microsoft azure once you do that brush up your networking skills brush up your programming skills understand how powershell works how cli works how vms work and then start with the syllabus for the examination guys if you devote or dedicate somewhere around three to four months very loyally at least three to four hours every day three hours maybe you would be in a very good position to go ahead and crack this particular certification examination and again focus on microsoft stack of softwares i mean dotnet framework which is very important for any azure certification examination guys Having said that guys now what I'm going to do is I'm quickly going to switch into my console or my browser because I want to walk you through certain important pointers as well. So guys I've actually gone ahead and switched into my browser. So this is the page I wanted to show to you people as you can see this is the certification that I wanted to talk about. So you can see the fees here is $165 which I've already mentioned. So one thing that I missed out on was what if you are from a different region. You can come here and you can select that region and see the price changing. So since I am in India probably we have the prices in Indian currency for that. I would have to scroll up. Yeah, here it is. It's 4800 Indian rupees. So guys if you are taking this exam from different regions make sure that you actually check the price according to your region again who should take this exam IT professionals that is admins specifically and you have to take that exam in English as I've already mentioned. The details are mentioned here guys. What are the topics that you would like to focus on who should take this exam and questions like that. I've answered most of those questions but if you want to know about it in detail you can come here. Let's just go ahead and Azure AZ certifications. Let's look for this particular pointer. I would like to show you the differentiations. Yeah, so this is the breakdown guys. I was talking about at the start of the session AZ 100 and AZ 101 are the certifications that probably cover most of the content from Azure 533 certification that is 7533 which is the administrative exam certification. See what they've done is they've broken it down into two parts. This is Azure infrastructure and deployment specifically which we talked about. If you take a step further once you clear this certification you can take this one as well. Microsoft Azure integration and security is the other one. So it focuses on something else. So you can see that the content is divided and intent is role specific. So yes this simplifies the job in a lot of way. You might also wonder what about the people who have already taken the 7533 certification. If you want to switch to these certifications you might be required to take this set of examination. These are the bridge examinations guys which help you connect all the certifications together. You can see it's certification transition. So yes guys this is how the new certifications are and this is what Azure has done. Again if you're looking for structured training approach this would be a good option. Edureka has recently launched their AZ 100, 200 and 300 certifications and those are very specific to the content that we've discussed till time. Now if you take a look at the content here the topics that are covered here are very much specific to the certification and very much in line with the certification. You can see it here. These are the topics that were mentioned in the discussion we had. It is very much in line with the certification examination. So 
if you take this course you would be very well prepared for your examination and again you would get a very good hands on on microsoft azure if you take a look at the fees here it is very less 17000 inr again the fees here is real time it changes when i say changes i mean if you are a customer and you stay tuned with our channel you probably might get more offers and uh, probably might get extra discount as well so stay tuned for that as well if you talk about the features of the certification they're fairly good guys you can take a look at those here all the details are here projects and stuff like that if you come here you have these features that is your support you have real life case studies you'd be working on you have recorded sessions and lifetime access to the resources that you actually get while taking this course it is your decision guys it was just a suggestion as far as this particular session goes i wanted to focus on microsoft azure az 100 in particular i hope that i've answered most of your questions guys as far as this particular session goes guys i would be ending it here and here if you do have any queries put those in the chat box and we would be more than happy to get back to you as soon as possible having said that thank you guys bye bye